excuse me, it's, it's you, isn't it? I know you. I don't think so. Yes, you're him off the telly. You're Ironside, the San Francisco police chief in a wheelchair with a heart of gold. Mmm, gorgeous. No, I'm Professor Stephen Hawking. May I have your autograph, Inspector Ironside? No. I do not sign autographs. Can't sign autographs. Can't sign autographs. Typical, you bloody celebs are all the same. You forget who it was who made you famous in the first place. Fuck you then. Roll Fuck the titles. You. Where today's catchphrase will be, who's got my running shoes? And coming up on TV Oval this week, we teach you how to have sex with Vanessa Feltz without falling in, the secrets in the crampons, we show you how to make your own stylish colour bars in fashionable Draylon at a fraction of the usual price. Plus, we join their gay Daleks as dyslexia sets in and they mistake an M and S store for an S and M parlour with hilarious consequences. who died today. It was only this week that Melvin Bragg was seen hosting the prestigious Melvin Bragg Self-Congratulatory Awards. Honouring artists and musicians who'd climbed furthest up his back passage this year. Some said that Bragg was Sasha Distel with an O-level. A bouffant-haired, vain, smug, self-satisfied, self-publicising bastard who tried to pass himself off as Britain's leading intellectual and self-appointed spokesman for the arts. Great poets, great painters. His critics were less kind, pointing out that, although he constantly dropped words like existentialism and postmodernism, there was only one ism that described his work. A load of old jism. Born Melvin Bragg, Melvin Bragg grew up in Cumberland. His early childhood was plagued by a morbid fear of train spotters, or an arachnophobia. But he also suffered with pharynx problems. Back in the 1940s, it was common for children to have their adenoids taken out, but, owing to a mix-up, Melvin had adenoids put in. After graduating from Kendall Mint Cake College at the University of Sellafield with a diploma in saying how wonderful Cumbria is every five minutes, the nasally challenged Bragg confirmed his depth of feeling for his beloved homeland by immediately moving to London and living there forever. His big break into television came in the late 1960s with the programme Up Your Arts. <laughs> Always keen to have a masturbate, Bragg had soon masturbated on every TV station in Britain. Under his guidance, the South Bank show became ever more populist and ever less popular. Tonight we look at crap. The nation was stunned this morning when, while hosting his dreary radio programme, they heard the sound of Bragg asphyxiating after swallowing his own nostrils. This is Radio 4, now at five past nine, here's Melvin Bragg to start the week. Good morning, Rosites. What function? Uh. <laughs> Get a doctor. Melvin Bragg, who died today. That was not very funny. Spark is loquacious and unusual magic piano has returned. I'm hung like a hamster and it's an excellent time to become a missing person. Sparky, it is I, your talking piano. We have to talk. We have to talk? What about? Sparky, we have to get off this TV. Awful shit. Not now, some other time, piano. I want to be a star. I asked Elton John if he'd put me in advance to play at the Queen Mother's funeral. But he said I wasn't grand enough. And it seems to me he lived his life with a candle up his piano. Sorry, Sparky, I'm on Viagra. Is it okay if I sing you a dirty song? Well, I guess it is. A little walk along that Thames embankment. A little girl who didn't know what 
Sparky's magic piano will now be chopped up and turned into a fake Louis XIV armchair. I thank you. Book now for the funniest and most exciting panto in the North, Babes in the Wood, starring the family's favourite Crackerjack star, Stu Francis, the world's strongest man, Jeff Capes, the Chuckle Brothers with TV's Chuckle Hounds and singing star, Linda Nolan. The best and funniest panto is always at Darlington Civic Theatre. Telephone Darlington 486 555. Nothing of apropos. I say, you, 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 want to see, you want to see a dodgy video of somebody passing out on live television to <laughs> see everything? Dame, whatever her Christian name is, yes. are on the bench, it would uh, be your ladyship or my lady or so and so. I'm so sorry, I must apologise uh, actually to our actors who've been standing here for a very long time under the lights. Do just stay there. Uh, can we actually go past our poor judge. Charming. That's the BBC way. Just walk over the dead extra and get a fresh one in. Still, you've got to see their point. Snoozing on the job. I mean, she deserves that sort of treatment. Talking of snoozing, pitiable link, I have a dream. No, that's a bream! I said I have a dream! As I was saying, I have a bream. And in that bream, this is how I see a special award being given at the BAFTAs for shitty little British TV stars who can't bear to leave the screen after they've strutted and fretted on the stage. Look at them. They've just got to stick a bit of themselves in front of the cameras. An erect thumb, head poked into view, legs stuck into shot, idiotic gestures, sorry. But if that boy gets Alzheimer's, his IQ will go soaring right up. I'm sorry, why am I talking like this? It's the pains in the head. Moves on quickly. It's time for another adventure with the aliens who don't know whether they're Arthur or Martha as they probe Uranus with their 9-inch refractors while journeying in the TURDIS. What's going on? It's terrible. I failed my MOT. They confiscated my torso. My ring piece is worn out and my big end is buggered. You're telling me you spunk ridden rust bucket of a... of a... Yes. Blackhead? Ooh. What use are you to me now? I can still suck like a nanny goat. I'm not interested. I'm off for my MOT too. Then I might see if I can find a naval start. You mean to match your Prince Albert? No, you silly cow. Naval start hanging around the docks. Ooh. Then tonight I'm off with Michael Portillo to see the hit show Cats. Ooh. Michael Portillo. Gorgeous. You don't get many of those to the pound. Ha <laughs> Sometime later. Ha <laughs> You failed your MOT too, you decapitated friend of Dorothy. It's your fault. I failed on emissions. My eye hole was clogged up with your white wee-wee. The authorities confiscated my bonds. <laughs> this is terrible. The fearsomely heterosexual Mr. Portillo will not want to take me to an evening performance of Cats without a head. I need head. Give me head. Give me head. Do not ask for head, as a refusal often offends. Ooh, ooh, I want head. White wee-wee. White wee-wee. Ooh, ooh, It's in my ooh, eye. It's ooh, in ooh. my eye. Exterminate. Join the gay Daleks next time as they travel back in time and fistfuck Joe Orton and Kenneth Halliwell. Assassination of the week. Did they live? This week, come with me down under Carbar as we travel to Australia in 1994 and see Prince Charles entering Tumbleland Park in Sydney during a visit to this far-flung remnant of the British Empire. But, uh-oh! Oh, dear! Somebody with a loaded gun is running towards the prince. He's pointing it at the future King of England. He wants to see what blue blood really looks like. But did Charles survive the shooting unscathed? Or did he go under, down under? Didgery, don't touch that dial. Find out after the break. <laughs> Girls, it's free. The mermaid ring with the lovely pearly centre. Free in Diana, the famous picture story paper for girls, with exciting new ideas and stories, fascinating features about wildlife, pony riding, swimming, 
They're all in Diana with the lovely free gift, the mermaid ring. Diana, the big picture paper for girls. Out tomorrow, sixpence. TV Awful. Welcome back to TV Awful. At the end of part one, we asked you whether Charles Windsor is still enjoying oxygen or whether he became the artist formerly known as Prince. Let's see. Perhaps you forgot, but Prince Charles was assassinated in Australia in 1994. Sad, but true. As a result, Princess Diana became Queen, married Dodie Al Fayed, and reigned over an Islamic State until the year 2034. However, <laughs> <カモさんはどんな気持ちでご覧になってましたか? 戦いました。笑> やはり前線しても Dreadfully badly sung, the program's falling to bits. Sing it again properly. Thank you. Pay you enough. The King's Singers. Uh, considered hip and groovy by the sort of people who thought Kelly Monteith was a dangerous comedian and Val Dunican is an angry young man. Me, I'd like to book them as guests on my new show, Singe Something Simple and Set the Fuckers Alight. And we're talking Burns Night without the haggis and bagpipes. Know what I mean, missus? Because this is how they sound to me. Say that you need no diamond rings and I'll be satisfied. Tell me that you want the kind of things that money just can't buy. I don't care too much for money, money can't buy me love. I don't care too much for money, money can't buy me love. And now it's time, now it's time to show the secret films. The clips, the stars, the clips, the stars, so we never see. The shows that failed, derailed, and never made. We bring you the pilots that crash. Starts medium range, goes all high. This week's pilot that crash goes lower was made for a now defunct satellite station. Who started out by commissioning some dangerous television, but then when they got it, they decided they preferred safe television instead. Even though we all know that the only really dangerous television is a set with the live wire connected to the neutral socket and the earth wire dangling down into the bath water. But who was responsible for this cartoon called Tubby the Tumor? Or rather, who was irresponsible for it? And which evil swine voiced the part of Tubby, the scumbag? We'll never know! Hello, I'm Tubby the Tumor. I'm a very naughty little malignant carcinogen, and I'm aiming straight for your lymphatic system. <laughs> Everyone likes to give presents now and then, and so do I. I like giving people cancer. It's my hobby. I just love hearing people say those six little words that mean so much. Oh Christ, I've found a lump. Once I get a grip on your cell walls, I grow bigger and bigger and bigger, while the person gets smaller and smaller, until it's difficult to know which is the tumor, me or the person. Oh! I'm a romantic too. Imagine your surprise when your girlfriend breaks off in mid-blowjob and says, what's this lump on your left ball? I'll tell you what that lump is. It's me, and I'm inoperable. What a turn up, eh, guys? It won't be her swallowing hard, it'll be you. I'm not benign, I'm malignant. But sorry, viewers, I have to go and give more people cancer now. Give, give, give. That's me all over. Time for tubby bye byes. Time for tubby bye byes. <laughs> of something! When I die, kids, I want to die peacefully in my sleep like my great uncle Bernard, not screaming and in terror like his passengers. <laughs> we offer the most beautiful jewellery and rings created by craftsmen. And when it's time for giving... 
come to David Allen Jewellers and give the good lady wife the finest gift money can buy, a Timex. I know a guy who's made his lolly, pretending that he's off his trolley. It's nice being Dale, he's daytime tell, he's brand new chap. It's nice being Dale, he's a one-man lack of concentration camp. He rose without trace and it's miraculous, he's made it big by appearing vacuous. Your clue for this one is S-M. E G M A. The late Larry Grayson has a clue. Dale's missing a vinyl chromosome. Housewives think that he's a sex machine. Hi, gorgeous. It's Dale Winter. Sorry, girls. He's a queen. He looks big and gorgeous in his shiny suit. But he's not just a vegetable. He's a It's nice being dead. So nice. There's prizes in store and much, much more. It's nice being dead. So nice. But he's well past his own sell by date. And now we must stop, cause our lawyer says that Dale will soon. Makes the eyes water and continues popping Viagra like their Tic Tacs. <laughs> So that's it, kids. We've seen about everything this week and prove once again that life is like a pubic hair on a lavatory seat. Before too long, you get pissed off. And we've just had confirmed that Princess Diana will be getting something very special for Christmas. The Queen Mother. But before I embark on my next televisual project, an introduction to ancient Greek mathematics presented by Humphrey Bogart and entitled uh, Here's Looking at Euclid, I must jump into my invalid car, pick up the phone, and cause unrest. <laughs> Good afternoon. Guinness Publishing can help you. Oh, hello. Is that the Guinness Book of Records? Yes. Oh, hello. I wonder if you can help me. Are you trying for a Guinness Book of Records? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to... Um, what I'm trying to do is... Uh, yes? Go on the longest... Uh, have the longest conversation with the... Uh, uh, I'm trying to have the longest conversation with the... Uh, I'm trying to have the longest conversation with the receptionist at the Guinness Book of Records. Yes, yes, okay. <laughs> no, I'm only, I, I say, I'm only having a joke. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it? Yes. It's what makes the country great. At least you feel you're doing something when you're, when you're trying to grow 50-foot fingernails. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm as confused as 20 blind lesbians in a fish market. I, I'm sorry, I can't... <laughs> Complete change of accent, uh, but could you put me through to the chief boss and head of the Guinness Book of Records? Yes. Hello, can I help you? Uh, you deal with the records? Oh, yes, I deal with the general inquiries that come through, yes. Oh, it must be lovely. Uh, sorry about the noise, I'm in my car, I'm doing 90 in a 30 mile limit. <laughs> uh, well, what was the actual record claim? Oh, right. The, uh, my claim is this, that, um... Uh, hold on a second, it's my dog syndrome. Down syndrome! <laughs> Bloody dog, is dangerous. Sorry about the bad language, I always say obscenity is the crutch of inarticulate... Fuckers. Yeah. Ralph. Uh, sorry, as I was saying, what I wish to attempt on Record Breakers is to place the world's biggest living tampon up the vagina of the world's largest mammal. OK. Uh, picture the scene. Norris would start his stopwatch. Right. And wearing nothing more than flippers and a snorkel, I would swim up to a lady whale's private and insert a live sheep in record time. No cruelty involved, the sheep would have oxygen tanks. Uh, then that woman who, uh, what's her name, who, who, the one who looks like she could suck the colour out of a marble, um, what's her, Cheryl Baker and Chris Akabuku would interview me by satellite and call me a genius. Is that the sort of thing you're after? To be honest with you, it's probably a little bit too unique for us because we really tend to have competitive records in the book, um, i.e. ones that other people have already attempted or attempt on a regular basis. All oh, right. No. Uh, can I just ask one thing? Yeah. Is it Norris or Ross who's dead? Yeah, it's Ross. All right. Ross is dead? That's right, yeah. Is it, was he the one who um, was shot at the door by the IRA? <laughs> no syndrome! Don't jump up on the steering wheel! That's dangerous! Oh, <laughs> Hello? 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 Three.
Harry, you've got me under your skin. <laughs> oh well, TV Offal is over forever and ever now. But remember, you'll always carry a part of me inside of you. <laughs> Another swell TV show from Associated Radio Fusion.